Hello, I am Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and today we are going to continue our series on statistics using Python. Previously, we went over calculating the z-table using the standard normal distribution. This time, we'll go over calculating z-scores and then find the percentile those scores correspond to using the z-table we made. So let's go ahead and start with opening up our data and loading it into a list. We're going to go through this quickly because we've done this in most of our previous videos. So if you'd like to see how this is done in more detail, you can take a look at our previous videos in this series. This is our seventh tutorial in our series on using statistics in Python. We're also going to go ahead and write a quick function to get our mean from our list of data. The sample and population means are calculated in the same way. We just take the sample size which is the length of our list, and sum up all the incomes in that list, then divide it by our sample size. This is also something we've covered in previous videos, so we're going to go through this quickly as well. We will go ahead and add in one more function to calculate the population standard deviation. This is different from a sample standard deviation because rather than dividing by our population size, minus one, we just do our population size. Calculate this using our income list and our mean. We'll start off by defining our sum of squares, get our sample size, and then set our sum of squares equals zero. And then we'll build up our sum of squares using the squared value of our deviation scores and divide that by our sample size. That gives us our variance. We then take the square root of that and that gives us our, our standard deviation. If you want a more detailed breakdown of how this works, you can look back at our video on calculating measures of dispersion. If you haven't noticed yet, there is a trend of how each of these concepts builds on one another, and each additional concept often requires some measure of understanding of the previous concepts. So now let's get our mean and standard deviation. For the sake of this video, we are going to call our 3 million sample size a population. That's not technically correct. The population of the US is over 300 million and our sample size is about 3 million. Now what you call your population is often defined by what your scope of interest is. If you're interested in just a classroom, like you don't care about what everybody else in other classrooms are doing, then your population is a classroom. And the information you gather on that is your population data. Now let's say the classroom you're looking at is one of many classrooms, then that is a sample and it needs to be handled differently because you don't necessarily know information about that population. You don't know everything about every other class. Now let's define a value to look at. We'll just say $50,000 and now let's convert that into a z-score or a standardized score. To do that, we will take the $50,000 value, Z, subtract our mean, and then divide that by our population standard deviation, and then round that to two decimal places. Then we'll go ahead and print it out just so we can see what it is once we get through with typing out our code. With our Z score in hand now, we can go ahead and bring in the table we made in our last video, which is various Z scores and the probabilities which correspond to them. If you want details about how this table works, you can find that in our previous video. Now, opening up our Z table is the exact same as opening up our income data. So we'll go ahead and speed things up so we can get through this quickly. For the last part of this video, we'll go ahead and just make a simple loop, go through our table that we've loaded in and find the probability, which corresponds to the z-score that we found for our income. To check if it matches, we'll just do a simple if statement, and if the z-score that we calculated matches the z-score in our table, we'll state that our probability corresponds to that, and that our percentile is just that probability times 100, and we'll round that to two decimal places. Lastly, we'll go ahead and prepare a print statement so we can read our results and then break out of the loop because now that we've found our score, we don't need to go through all the other values. 
Now we'll just go ahead and save and run this in a new uh, dedicated IPython console and take a look at what we get for our probability score. We can read this here. We have a z-score of 0.04, an income of 50,000 has a standard score of 0.04, which corresponds to a percentile of 51.59. Let's go ahead and play around with a few other values for z and see what we come up with. Anything that's greater than four is not gonna show a percentile because that's outside the range of the table we made. As a fun little exercise, let's go ahead and find a 99th percentile real quick. We'll go ahead and keep on changing our values, playing around with this. This isn't how you typically want to do this, and I don't advocate using this as a method of finding it, but we can have some fun and see what the 99th percentile of income looks like. 98th percentile, let's go ahead and edge this up a little bit more. 98 and a half, and we'll keep on edging this up. We're a little bit too high, so let's go ahead and decrease it. And 99.6, let's go ahead and decrease it just a little bit more. 99.04, this is even more. 99.01, that's about as close as we're gonna get. So in the population of the American Community Survey 2017, you need an income of $196,100 to be in the top 1%. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any other thoughts, also leave those in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Next video, we'll go over the calculation of a QQ plot to evaluate how normal a sample is.